Greetings! This is a quick video about my recently completed automated pressure cookers. Um, I built a controller. This controller drives a 1500 watt cooktop and that cooktop is controlled via the temperature probe and a PID with that is programmable with 30 steps. I'm using three steps. The three steps are um, get it up to temperature and then rock the pressure cooker rock or hard at 145, 146 uh, degrees and then after 10 minutes of that which purges all the air and gets everything to temperature I'll run the pressure cooker for however many minutes which is the second step and then the third step will be the cool down which it basically just shuts it off so the settings are if you go into the settings step one 146 Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. Step 2, 145 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes and doing this with agar plates. And then step 3 is 244, which really I don't think really matters, but the, the main thing is the time um, for step 3 is negative 121. And whenever you have a negative 121, that is a default for um, shutdown, automatic shutdown end process. So that will uh, turn the pressure cooker off and pretty much just sit there and cool down once it hits that third phase. Um, I'm using a brass compression fitting where I removed the compression fitting and put a high temperature O-ring in. I'm changing it from, from a pressure cooker to pressure cooker by just unscrewing it and I'll screw it into this one over here. Uh, the nice part about the not having an actual brass compression fitting but having the o-ring is you can slide it in and out if you want to change the depth for example this um, brass fitting is a little bit longer so I need to have a longer extension out on the the probe that saves me from having any kind of quick disconnect or anything on the wiring which is just another way to fail um, I could potentially have false readings or an open connection from corrosion or just a poor connection so I figured this is probably the best way to swap it between the two pressure cookers comes loose with a 7 16 wrench fairly easy to do uh, I had to drill this out as well because these are not designed to have something go through them so I had to drill out the base to clearance the probe um, I find that the this rocker versus this rocker where it just kind of dances every once in a while this one is much more predictable for the PID to calibrate and auto-tune because it's, it's, a, it's a constant and the, it can kind of get the, the heat cold, heat cold, how it's constantly losing the temperature. Whereas this one, it, it'll, the temperature and pressure will, will build up and then it'll, it'll rattle off. So it, it, I think I'm going to convert this one to actually have a, a similar rocker to this where it'll keep rocking at a constant pace and um, it'll be a lot easier for the PID to control that accurately. With, with this one I saw the temperature jumping around a lot. With this one I ran just now, um, I'm warming up back up again actually. Um, it was it was very consistent to within like a tenth of a, of a degree or very close to that where, where it wasn't varying a lot and this one would vary a lot because of the fact it would build up pressure and then release. Um, as you can see there's a pretty small burner not really meant to hold much weight so with the um, with the big pressure cooker I have some some copper tubes that are actually inside here it's propping up the uh, the the bottom plate for the agar but I'll put the, the copper tubes they're two inch copper diameter pipe I'll put one here one there one there one on the back side and that'll hold it up uh, I currently have to shim it using little shims aluminum shims but I think the, the better answer is uh, delete these little stands and install kind of weak springs and that will push the um, heat plate up against the bottom of the the, the big burner, the, the 41 quart burner, uh, I'm sorry, 41 quart pressure cooker and it won't cause a lot of load to go onto this. It will only be the weight of the springs but it also makes sure that there's a good contact patch with the heat. You want to make sure that all four corners, well not all four corners, but the, the whole 
disc is flat, so all four corners have to be shimmed properly or use the spring. I find that, that that'll probably work the best, mainly because I'm using a table that's not very well supported um, and the weight of the substrate or whatever I'm loading into the pressure cooker and the temperature of the pressure cooker, it actually changes the shape of the bottom. So I've, I've come to realize that I think springs are the best answer. Um, that's about it. Uh, thanks for joining. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up. And uh, have a good day.